Steve Fiddick here again, welcoming you to the tutorial, a sight reading lesson. I'd like to take a moment and welcome Tony, who's been gracious enough to come in and sight read this example. Tony, do you have a pencil? All right, yes, All right. very, very good. Um, just some roadmap instructions for this particular example. We start dynamically, we start at fortissimo. The first quarter note has a rooftop accent on it, okay? So the very first entrance is going to be strong but with a short articulation. Then the dynamic shifts immediately to mezzo piano. Okay, good, so we'll, we'll make our markings on, on the part. Uh, the point is you wanna mark your part so that when you're reading, during the first read, you can catch as much of this as you can. Letter A is the melody. We read down to the double bar line. Second phrase. At letter B is the bridge, okay? Figures that you see in the bottom parts of the staff, like at letter A, those are background figures played by the lowest instruments in the band. Figures written on top of the staff, like at letter B, are background figures played by the higher instruments within the band. Any figures that you see wi written within the staff, one, two, three, four, fifth system, one, two, three, four, fifth measure, beat four, that would be an ensemble figure, okay? We crescendo, we crescendo until the very last measure, which is fortissimo ensemble figure. Dotted quarter note accented, followed by an eighth note with a staccato marking, okay? Medium swing, quarter note of 152. You'll have a two bar count in. All right? Any questions about the form, about the concept of the arrangement? I don't think so. All right. Here we go. You can move it, sure. And that's the first thing you're going to want to do before you even begin to play the first note. You want to make sure that you're set up. You want to make sure that the instrument is set up to your body configuration. Don't try to adjust your body to the instrument. If things aren't set up where you, uh, where you feel most comfortable, make the adjustments before, um, before you play. You did a fine job reading the notation a couple of things to look out for. One are the dynamics. Pretty much from start to finish, you were playing at forte. All right. The intro starts fortissimo, but then it comes down to mezzo piano. That was an opportunity to play very, very softly. Okay. Also, in the third system, third measure, four and, long, short articulation, followed by three and a half beats of rest. You played through that each time that happened. So we want to bring a, a, a larger sense or a more macro sense to the dynamic of the example. That's what's most important, not the individual figures. What's most important is the dynamics, okay, and how you're bridging each section of this example together. And the signposts are the double bar lines. The signposts are the double bar lines. Read toward those double bar lines and try to exaggerate your dynamics more, okay? You wanna try it again? Sure. All right.
much better, dynamically much better, but you can even exaggerate it more. You could treat each symbol in your setup as a ride symbol. For example, letter A could have played it on this ride symbol. The intro could have been played on this crash ride. Letter B could have been played on the swish. So you can change the texture in accordance with the rehearsal letters on the part. That keeps the listener engaged, that keeps the musicians on the bandstand engaged. So you're not playing on one texture at one dynamic for the entire composition. That gets to be a very one-dimensional type of a texture, okay? So to be aware of that. And how do you become aware of that? Well, you record yourself. Mm -hmm. The more you record yourself and listen back to yourself playing these, these examples or full big band arrangements with the band, you learn your own tendencies. You learn where you push, where you drag, whether or not you need to exaggerate your dynamics, you know, the sound of your hi-hat, the sound of your ride cymbal, snare drum, comping elements, articulation of phrases, all of these ideas and concepts. That's your best teacher. Continue to record yourself, listen back. First, make notes of the things you do well. You know, keep it positive. Notate the things you do well, and then make a second column of the things that you need to work on right and then go into the practice room and work on those things and plug them back into the uh, arrangement the next time you read it and play it with the band all right any questions i don't think so good job